Welcome to the Journey to Forever podcast, where we discuss the highs and lows of life and love. Join us, your hosts, Flo and Joe, for a weekly recalculation of our roots as we navigate the twists and turns with candid conversation, comfort food and laughter. Welcome back, Forever family. If you are a new listener, thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss future episodes. I'm Flo, the recovering over lover, and I'm joined by my co-host, the cool and calm Joe. We are both voyagers navigating the journey from first meeting to forever love. On this podcast, we share the hazards and happiness we encounter to help you experience more joy on your journey. In this season, we are focused on dating. Each week, we are sharing with you fun date ideas for you and your partner to stay connected while still being safe during this pandemic. And hey, because this week has been really, really tough, we're just going to have a heart-to-heart conversation. And guess what we're talking about? Ha <laughs> ha! Heartbreak. <laughs> so stay tuned. <laughs> but as usual, before we get into the juiciness of the topic... We do a bit of reminiscing in a segment we call, What's Your Story? Hey, so hi folks. Good day, good night, good morning, all of the above. Flo, I have a question for you. Got a story to share about running out of gas or getting a flat tire while driving? I will speak to the latter. Getting a flat tire while driving. Actually, I was not driving. I was being driven. My best friend was driving. I'd gone with him to drop off his brother at home. And (laughs) on the way back home, rain started falling and we got a flat tire. So he hopped out of the car to change the tire, but... At one point in time, after a few minutes, I was like, but what's taking him so long? So I tap on the window and he, he like gesticulated, like, what's happening? What, what, what's up? And I like, what going on with you? Like, why are you taking this long? And he just start, he stood up there staring at this tire, like almost sizing the tire up. I'm like, what's wrong? You might have to get angles right. <laughs> so... I got out of the car in the pouring rain. And I was like, dude, just hurry up and treat the tire so we could get out of the rain now. Uh. He's like, all right now. Uh. But I, I was just, just frustrated by his slow movement. So I just take the, don't even ask me what it is. Is that a tire iron? The thing yeah. that is take out the, the nuts from the tire. Yes. Yes, that. And just undid it. Change it. I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> so thank you very much, daddy. I know you always impressed upon me the need to be able to change your own tire. Right? It came in handy. Very handy. Mm-hmm. Self-sufficient. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well. All right. What do you have there for me now? Let me. Got a story to share about a computer catastrophe. Woo. Well, I have a story. This story is actually an ongoing story because I experience this every day at my job with my nemesis, Excel. <laughs> oh, God. Because for some reason, Excel decides to crash just before you hit the save button. And that really sucks. Yes, people, I am hurt. I I am really, really hurt. I have no idea. I am. Excel right now is in my bad books. Okay. And I think there's a lot of people out there with this same story, you know, because I'm not alone. My co-workers, they experience all, the same yes. thing. So it's like an ongoing thing. And this is, yes, I don't mind if a computer 
crashes. Right. You can't help it. Okay, it's this time, it's done. Mm-hmm. You get new parts, it go for some more years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this everyday crash, no. That is so wrong. So yeah, that me venting on Excel. All right. I, I hear you. I, I, I feel your pain. Because I know how Excel could be frustrating to deal with. Especially when, you know, you... you <laughs> You're reviewing some long, 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 long spreadsheets and you're like, man, you know how many, how many hours I've been yes. working on this? <laughs> and you have to start from scratch. Sorry, babe. <laughs> it doesn't, no, no. Yeah. Mm. All right. But, well, I can't even say that we're moving on to happier news because... Well, it's kind of happier because it's informative. We'll have different views on the topic that we're getting into yeah so why don't you introduce the topic joe yes this was joe's choice today well i believe that people need to discuss these things Mm -hmm. and the topic is how do women and men deal or handle breakups or having a falling out with their significant other Okay. As in how they get together if they do with their friends, guy friends, girlfriends, just their friends Mm -hmm. and trash it out. See if there's any good advice to come or if it's just I'll side with you just because. All right. Yeah. So in your experience, how do you deal with breakups or not necessarily a breakup a having an argument having disagreeing a disagreement of some sort all right i agree that we will not always agree we would have disagreements that's a normal part of any relationship but as a relationship yes But as I have mentioned before, I can't remember which episode of this podcast, but I said I am not going to discuss our quote unquote issues with anybody but you. (laughs) All right. So that that has always been my stance as not something new just to this. That has always been my, my stance. I generally like to work things out because I think in that episode I mentioned what fuel that particular behavior pattern in that growing up my father always said to me keep people out of your relationship good advice so if i have an issue with joe and i am not one to i don't like to be upset for too long so if something bothers me he knows that i would talk to him about it even if i need to talk to him about it for two hours till you say oh god all right now <laughs> Um, but I prefer to address it head on. Like I, I am not the sit in the corner and sulk kind of person. I once was, but now no. So that's that's generally if you have a disagreement. What about you, Mister uh, okay. Mister Calm and Cool? Me, I basically deal with stuff for myself. I don't really reach out to people for help. Uh, over the years. It was only like twice and I have ever gone to somebody just to, because I needed somebody to talk to. Mm-hmm. And that was a cousin of mine and a long-term friend. When I tell you long-term, he's been my friend since we were like five. Okay. So, yeah. And those are situations where sometimes as a man, you need another man to talk to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because we men are not always right. Sometimes we may see something from a different angle. So we go to speak to someone, another man, a close friend Mm -hmm. or relative, and see, well, I'm the kind of person, tell me if I'm being an idiot. Okay. Let me know. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would know how to move from there. Is she right to feel the way how she's feeling? Mm -hmm. You know, so, or do I really, could I hold firm here? And let her realize, well, okay, she made a mistake and have her, but I'm not the one. I always boil down, I boil down like baji, quick, quick, quick. So 
Yeah. Well, as you mentioned, seeking outside help. So whereas I would not necessarily engage or share my issues, my relationship issues with my friends, I, you know me, I'm an advocate. If, if things really that bad and you really need an external party to commiserate with, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would go get myself some therapy, man. <laughs> Okay, so you prefer a stranger? Yeah, son, impartial to the party, not, not even my mama. Okay, okay. <laughs> because the mama's supposed to take my side and he would right? Yeah, so, well, that's how we handle stuff. Right. But as growing up, getting mm-hmm. older, coming three years, mm-hmm. you must have had friends who would have been going through something. <gasps> And came to you or came to a group of y'all for y'all input. And how would y'all deal with that? Boy, 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 boy. (laughs) It make me remember this time back in high school. (laughs) Um, And... This, there was a large group of friends that would all hang out and there were a few couples in a group. And one particular girl, she was coupled up. Apparently, the guy was cheating on her. All right. I was not aware. Like, me, I not want to mark people's business. Half the time, my head has been in the clouds. So, I didn't know. But I got to school on this particular day and... Somebody, other girls in the, in the crew, like, grabbed me and all of us huddled together. So I listened and I'm like, okay, I had to be brought up to speed as to what was taking place. Yeah. So young lady did not turn up at school that day. So we had to travel <laughs> to her house because she was apparently very distraught. And some of the other girls who were closer to her were, like, worried about Anna. Yeah. So we turned up at her house and we all were all there to console her and let's allow her to pour her heart out and that sort of thing. And then, yeah, Mr. Man turned up on his scene sometime <laughs> afterwards. And we're like, no, bro, you're not, you're not coming in here, right? Just hold her strain. You know, even if she want to talk to you, not today, not now. But, when I think that for me was a good example of to stay out of people's business. Because he was very persuasive, let's just say. Yeah. And eventually <laughs> she left us in one room, tell us. And she went to talk to him. And apparently whatever he said, he was able to smooth things over. Oh, good for them. So... Taking him out of the picture, mm-hmm. how did y'all comfort her by saying, you know, those men are, all men are bad, all men are dogs, you know, stay away from these men. Let's, you know, you'll find somebody better. And is it, was it like that or was it, it actually like, we understand how you feel and, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. I, I can't remember the details exactly. But I will say this, that has never been my position because I know some doggish woman too, (laughs) right? I ain't going to call them what I want to call them, right? But I'm just saying, so I don't think any particular gender is is exclusive, bad behavior is exclusive to one particular gender. Mm -hmm. I think we are all prone to stupid, to doing stupid things. Yeah. Right? So, even if that was said, I would not have said it. What I would admit is that there was a lot of sharing of experiences. And I remember at one point in time, after the exchange of experiences, the, the, the sympathizing, we actually paused and we prayed together. Oh, okay. Right? Um, yeah. So, it, it was... It was different and, oh, that's when, in that particular, that particular episode is when 
I fell in love with Destiny Style. Yes, the original Destiny Style, the one and only Destiny Style I support. Mm -hmm. Um, The Writings on the Wall album. It was released around that time. So we played that joint over and over (laughs) and over and over. So there was dancing and because we tried to change the mood around. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, as men, Mm -hmm. if one of us of the bell, I have to speak for the men, I am around. I could only speak from my experience. Mm Mm-hmm. We don't, we probably may say, well, you know, the woman and them is, you know, they, they're real moody and, you know, mm. but overall, we wouldn't bash women. We would get to the part of the matter of his feelings at the time. Okay. But in a manly way, <laughs> you know. So in a manly get, way. In a manly way, yeah. It ain't going to be all wussy and... But you'll have a serious discussion. This, I believe, is a side a lot of women don't see in men. Mm. They believe when men get together, mm-hmm. all they do is talk about women, who they want to bang, who they want to do, who they, these things mm-hmm. when they get together. But sometimes men really have serious problems. Mm-hmm. And within, you may see a guy going out with his friends mm-hmm. and think he only going down and drink. But it's not that he's going to drink. Sometimes they just, the whole group of them would be there having laughs and everything. And eventually one or two of them would just step away and would just have that serious conversation right. and say, well, you know, I'm going through a little X, mm. Y, Z, you know, and one will say, well, talk to me, you know. Let me see what we could figure mm-hmm. this out. And there would, there would be one in the whole crew of them where would he would give mm-hmm. decent, a decent response, decent okay. information, decent advice. Mm-hmm. And they would have a serious man-to-man talk. And they would bring up past experiences to say, boy, I went through that already. Right. And... Don't worry about it. It will get better. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they will often give you the two sides of the situation. Okay. Because I have had friends or have friends. They were going through some stuff with their girlfriend. They mm-hmm. were ready to break up. And he was the typical alpha male. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not taking she on. I go move out. I, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. let she stay there and say... Boss man, don't talk like that. You understand? And I asked him one question, and this is in straight Trini parlance. Mm-hmm. You love the girl? He liked, well, I said, no, don't think about it. Just answer me. Mm-hmm. Say, you love the girl? And he was like, yeah, you know? I said, well, don't play man. Yeah. Go home. Sit down with the woman mm-hmm. and have a discussion or they could talk that out. Mm-hmm. If just don't go half cocked. Right. And just say, I done, I go and think just because you feel this is what a man's supposed to do, not to take no nonsense right. from this woman. Take your ego out of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I told him, just go home. You all sit and have a conversation. Right. And you'll see after a while that what you're fretting about is really not that important. Mm. Okay. You know, it sometimes you just have to just bow and say, cool. As my mother would say, yield. <laughs> yield. <laughs> yeah. You know, like a jousting. You know? Take out the white glove. So do you think though that... Because I know you've had like the same group of friends for a long time. Yeah. Do you think that your response, your the group's response to quote unquote heartbreak has evolved over the years? Like if you think back on heartbreak that somebody would have experienced during the teenage years as opposed to now. Do you think it has evolved? It has changed in any way? Yeah, it has changed a bit because they speak more now. 
you mm. all at that point in time where, as they say, ego. Right. You know, it would be like, nah, you know, she will talk to me when she's ready. That is she business. Mm-hmm. You know, right. We were all there at that point in time. But as the years grew, grew gone by and the, the time passed and it was like, yo, you know, this really making no sense. You know, mm. and at some point in time, each one of us, because do matter, there's a whole group of friends. Mm-hmm. It have everyone have their place in this group. Yeah, in everybody. This whole hierarchy. Yeah, everybody would have a rule. So mm-hmm. I may speak to you about personal things mm-hmm. and not speak to the rest. Okay. Because I know sometimes the rest more silly and into jokes and they mm-hmm. make fun of it. Mm-hmm. And then everybody have that one friend in that group that they feel would be the serious one that would give them advice. Okay. Some of them go to a friend who would tell them what they want to hear. Okay. You know, whatever you want to hear, I ain't going to tell you that. <laughs> yeah. When you leave here, you feeling like a superman. You go, you know, you real bad. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because so and so agree with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> you know? Okay. I would say that over the years, I have learned to deal with heartbreak more maturely. I think I was very emotional growing up. Emotional in that you, you, you get upset and you just allow yourself to feel the feelings without actually pausing to, to figure out what the root cause is, what the heart of the matter is. Yeah. As, as I've matured, I've allowed myself the space in order to, to really think about it and figure out like what went wrong. Because like I say, sometimes you are the root cause. You is you something, some stupidness that you do win. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> so yeah, just be more mature about it. And generally, like I say, I will, if it's a breakup, then yeah, give myself space. As I would say, revel in solitude. Put on, put on my heartbreak playlist, yeah. you know. Listen to the tunes, feel the feelings. Sometimes journal about it, you know. Re- really do some deep thinking about it. And make sure I learn the lessons. If there are apologies or further conversation, sometimes too, in thinking about it, you may get um, clarity on something and you may want to reach out to that person. For me, it's for closure, not necessarily, because if we break up, we break up. <laughs> I just saying that. So it might be for closure, just to, to make sure, okay, so... This is how I remember this particular thing going. What's your take on it? Just to have some measure of objectivity for future. But yeah, I, I know for sure that I have evolved in how I've treated with heartbreak. Yeah, I believe as we get older, we should become self-critical or mm-hmm. self-analyzing. Yeah, to improve to be, our self-awareness. Yeah, because mm-hmm. sometimes... People read problems differently. Mm-hmm. They may think, oh, it's that person. But it's just that you misinterpret what the person said, did. True. You know, and you believe that i supposed to react in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Because as we know, social media, movies, all these reality shows... Mm-hmm. When, if that's all you intake, Mm -hmm. it poisons your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's all you see. That's all you surround yourself with. Okay, so what specifically are you talking about in terms of how people treat with heartbreak? Yes, how people handle situations of, or dilemmas. In relationship dilemmas. Yes, Uh you know, how they deal with it. Okay. You can't be taking advice from a reality show that's edited. You it's only... not reality if it's edited. Right, 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 right. I, I hear you. Mm-hmm. You know. And some people maybe just put it on a show for the camera. It's exactly that. Yeah. Money talks. 
True. You know, if you want me to be this way, like it had, there once was this song where the woman basically destroyed everything the man had done. I can't remember what song what was mean? popular. Blue, Blue Cantrell? Yes. And at the end of the show, at the end of the whole video, uh-huh. Jenny Man was all right. They were normal. They were good. Blue it was end up being just a dream or something of the sort. Well, I can't remember the video also. All I remember in in is Blue and her crew walking through the mall because she's swiping his card. His card buying right, on right, a right, shopping spree. Yeah, she destroyed his Mercedes. And wait, wait, wait. Because two songs come into mind as they're talking about destroying Mercedes. So is it Blue Cantrell or is it, um, oh my goodness, I'm seeing the, 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 the young ladies. Um, well, there's quite face. a few of them because I think Beyonce has one. Beyonce? Yeah, early days. Okay. Early days. But Jasmine yeah, Sullivan. Could be. Um, but I think smash the windows out your car. That. Um, that I think it's the Blue Cantrell. Mm-hmm. Hit them up style. Yes, blue blue yes. song is hit them up style. Hit them up. Hit them yeah. up style. Mm-hmm. At the end of it all, it was just basically like a dream. None of those things happened. And when you look at it, mm-hmm. these people say stuff in music. Right. But they don't really live it. I'm not talking for blue in particular, right? Okay. Talking in general. general. Mm-hmm. They would say certain things in their music. Mm-hmm. Where you should do this and you should do that. Mm-hmm. But they are so quotations um, in love, right. in their real life, uh-huh. that their partner could do them whatever. Uh-huh. And they make an excuse for that person. <sighs> they All don't right. ever take their own advice. But usually the advice they give, mm-hmm. you can catch a charge. Well, I'm not going to say this. <laughs> Remember that conversation we were having um, the other day when we went in one of our favorite places to eat now? Right. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. And I was referencing the incident that happened on the avenue some years ago. Yes. When uh, when lady went Jasmine Sullivan on the man van <laughs> and she yes. ended up with some charges. So, yeah, as much as you might be upset... Yeah, those are negative... That, that's not how to deal with things. Yeah, negative advice. Mm-hmm. Don't go destroying people's property, no matter how hurt you may be. Yeah. Don't go destroying property because at that point in time, mm-hmm. all you did is give that person ammunition. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Ammunition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And guys, if it's you and you destroys a woman's property... And do crazy ish. Mm-hmm. The law not made for you. It's not friendly for men. <laughs> they usually take the side of the woman. Well, I don't know about that, honey. No, well, this is from my experience. Okay. All, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to be really, I guess the culture where we are now probably changing. Mm-hmm. But over the years, I've heard and I've seen the law is made for children, old people, and women. Okay. But for me, avoid the law altogether. Be the, bigger, right. be the bigger person and deal with it. So as we were saying, get your crew together and have a healthy conversation. If you yeah. don't want to discuss whatever the issue is with your crew, because you, you tell yourself somebody going on... Uh, I spread your business all over yes. town, then go get yourself a therapist somewhere. If you believe in the Lord and you have a pastor, talk to the pastor. I'm just yeah. saying, but find, that person to find talk somebody to, to talk to. Mm-hmm. Don't, yeah. don't do anything that will bring the law into the mix. <laughs> but for a word of advice, uh-huh. where not to go, uh-huh. do not go to the hair salon. Oh, or to social media. Yes, to get advice because <laughs> the people, the same friends who are around in the hair salon could have strangers there too. They will be listening to your problem and thinking, but you have no problem there. It sounds like you have a good man. Uh-huh. And next thing, it would be our man. Oh, uh-huh. oh. Yeah, because to them, uh-huh. that's no big deal. Right. To them, that's something... Like he's, 
Uh, this man treating you real good. And 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 you know, locally, it's three degrees of separation, not six. <laughs> so it's easy to find that problem, man. Yes, you will find that man very easy. You know? Very, very easy. So, because usually if a woman goes to the hair salon, if she isn't driving, uh-huh. or even if she does drive, uh-huh. the guy will come pick her up after. Oh. A lot of the times. So, so you think somebody going to be scoping out the scene? Yeah, they just want to see. Oh. Okay. Right, that's him. Mm. They will put themselves in place for that introduction. But what is this? Yeah, I have seen it happen. Okay, then. I, I really live in a rock, boy. Yeah. <laughs> that is where the term came out. Uh, a woman's worst enemy is another woman. All right. I don't want to be anybody's enemy. <laughs> yeah. okay. Man or woman. <laughs> That's right. All right. Any other thoughts that you want to discuss on, in, in terms of dealing with heartbreak, honey? No, no, no. No more thoughts. My thing is, people, you have an English tongue, a Spanish tongue, a French tongue. You have a, th- a tongue in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Use it. Talk, talk it out. Speak to the person. Okay. Have that conversation. You know, eventually you will realize it's not that bad. But have the conversation. Even if the decision after the conversation is that we should go our separate ways, Mm -hmm. have the conversation. No, why is this? Because you, as a person, could be wrong. Right. You know, and some people hate to admit when they're wrong. Mm -hmm. And and even if you are in the right, because the person did something pretty, pretty horrible, like we say, do not... Get the law involved. Do not go busting anybody windows anywhere, any <laughs> at any time. Yeah, yeah. See, just like walk like away. Count you, your count your blessings when and walk away. Through the gas in the car, and then and, it ex- say, and explode. Yeah, oh and she says, "I'm out of high rose." Oh my! Yeah, and she was charged too yeah, afterwards. She was locked up. Oh okay. Yeah. So yeah, re- re- revenge, the best revenge is success. Move on. Hold your head high and walk away. <laughs> yeah. And you can still be friends after. I don't Hi, know about bye. that. I don't know about that. No, you never know. As according to the situation of what made you leave. A future but, topic, people. Can, can exes really be friends? I just saying. Future topic. I don't believe in that. We done, we done. What are we? We have nothing to talk about. So you telling me none of your exes are your friends now? I wouldn't call them friends. As? Okay. So what you say? Acquaintances now? Yeah. We will be friendly. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. I could work with that. It, but, but no friends. Well, I ain't just talking, uh, folks. I am not friends with any of my exes. We don't uh, even speak. Because uh, <laughs> I know you would be uncomfortable. We don't even speak. So yeah, well, I don't. Oh. I think it's 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 okay to be friendly. You you be polite, you be cordial. But anyway, we drifting off yeah. topic. I yes. would be like Jerry, get my gun. <laughs> Why we Jerry? You see, that's what. <laughs> anyway, we, yes, folks. That's we, it. That's it. We just we, we, we talk about not get doing anything <laughs> to bring the law into the question. Do you understand? So so I don't believe in being friends. You can be friendly, but. We don't want to be friends. Oh, okay. Very well. All right, Joe. Oh, gosh. All that talking. Yeah. It's time for thing to eat. Well, uh, today I feel mm-hmm. like thing to drink, yeah? But anyway, w- w- what's on the menu today? Well, while we wait, we could wash it down with a little coconut water, you know? That is oh, it. Oh, gosh. Cool. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo. Folks, yes, could tell you all this. Uh, blow harder. What, uh, 1.5 liter coconut water? Listen. And yes, she drank all. Yeah, she I drank had no sh- all. I had no shame, people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the place was hot. <laughs> yeah. So every time I looked, it was just a little lower and a little lower. I was like, okay, then the bottle was in the trash. <laughs> all right, that's just me venting again. We were venting, you wanted some more. Uh, yeah, because I was a little parched, you know. I thought you'd have a little some, some, but that's okay. That moment has passed. 
So, wow, so ten hours in our thing to eat segment here now. Uh huh. We, what is your take on sushi? Oh, mm, 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 mm. people, if you if you could see where I'm dancing, I'm dancing in my chair now. <laughs> Hey, you know I love me some sushi. Yes, but now we You have you have said to me unequivocally, no, I am not indulging in sushi with you, Flo. Yeah. Because I have this thing. Most people call sushi I don't think sushi should be cooked. Well we, right? Cooked. I don't think that's sushi. Cook we sushi need makes really a, makes people feel more comfortable eating it. So yeah. I don't mind. Is sushi. is it really sushi or is it just fish and rice now? Oh gosh. I just wanna know. But but let like, me feel as though I'm still eating sushi now. Why why okay, so why? would you eat raw sushi? Raw fish? I have any past. Did Get, you enjoy it? Yeah. You, oh, okay. you know me, but not not all types. It, it it depends on 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 what it is. I like, but I generally like it. I would have to be in the mood for it. It's not something that I would do, that I would eat all the time, though. Okay, it's a once in a blue moon kind of thing for me. But when I get some good sushi, mm-hmm, with some nice wine, oh goodness, fancy, fancy. <laughs> hey, me personally I'm not a sushi lover I I will get bored of it really quickly after the first two pieces I'm good why but then again you are not really an appetizer person no I find sushi a bit bland it's like what do you mean yeah it just don't, I don't know my taste buds probably in a coma I don't know about it I find sushi to be boring I'll have one piece, two pieces, and like, okay, that's enough. I'm okay. good. Yeah, just for the experience of tasting it, as I tasted it. Mm-hmm. And if it's raw, mm-hmm. I don't think I'll eat it. Because I prefer my fish without the swim. Okay. Sir. You know, I'm not sure. I think I might try it just to say, mm-hmm. but I'm almost positive I would not like it. Okay. Well, to each his own. Yeah. So, yeah, folks, what do you all think? Do you all like authentic sushi? Or do you like your sushi cooked? But, you know, all the nice rice and all these fancy things is put on it. and Yeah, cooked fish, basically. Or do you like it raw? Yeah, baby, I like it raw. <laughs> 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 Okay, all right. inappropriate yeah. time, but <laughs> but all right, <laughs> but all right, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> um, moving on to what's filled your love tank? What's filled my love tank? Well, this week, mm-hmm. my love tank has been filled. By us having those little conversations before sleep, like how we used to back in the day. <laughs> See, now that you're back out to work and all these things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the little conversation just before we go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think for that week gone there, I think I slept a little better. For some reason, it's strange. I know why, but I wouldn't say it on here. I know why. <laughs> No, I, I don't know. But I, I slept a little better. It's like, okay, it was a reminiscent kind of thing, you know, the, the okay. old days, kind of, you know. Bring back the old time days. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, we'd have those conversations. But now that we both so tired, the conversation like half hour and over with, unlike back in the day, two, three hours. Uh, yeah, boy. <laughs> Some marathon conversations. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's it. That filled my love tank. Oh, what filled my love tank is I get real horn today, well, yeah. <laughs> I know we don't mean the treaty kind of one. 
car horn, folks. Car horn. Okay? Let's clear that up. Because I don't think it was real hard to laughing so tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, apparently, Joe saw me on, on the way to work this morning. And all I heard was the, the car horn tooting. So, I obviously looked, checked my mirrors to make sure nothing was all right. And it's only when I got to the office, he, he and he got to the office, he called and he said, Hey, you ain't here all our horn hours. I said, that was you. So I felt special knowing that he saw me. It was good to be seen. It felt good to be seen. Yes, people. <laughs> she could see me in a crowd. I could see her from a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so that filled my love tank. Nice. <laughs> all right, people. We we know that this wasn't a date idea, but here's what. If you are having those indoor dates, and we hope that you are, because where we are, COVID restrictions are being heightened once again. We hope that you are safe <laughs> as you are listening to this episode. So have this heart to heart. Who knows? With some sushi and some wine. <laughs> cooked. <laughs> yes, cooked. J- just, just so that Joe feels comfortable. <laughs> and as always, thank you for listening to the Journey to Forever podcast. Your feedback helps us to continuously improve the show. Words of affirmation is also one of my love languages, so we love hearing from you. Feel free to reach out to us and drop us that feedback on Instagram at JourneyToForeverTT or you can leave us a review at ratethispodcast.com slash JTF. Also, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on whatever app you're listening to this episode on. If you enjoyed this episode, and we hope that you did, be sure to share and discuss this episode with someone you love. Until next Friday, remember that forever love is a journey, not a destination, and the fuel that keeps you going is communication. Bye. Have a great one, folks. Bye.